Hello and welcome back to my garden in Zone 6, Nova Scotia, Canada. My name is Nicole and let me show you around. Now fair warning, this is a very honest garden tour. I have not weeded, there is likely to be some tools and some kids toys lying around, so be prepared for that. But there is also a lot of beauty and abundance hiding here amongst the weeds. Here is the back deck container garden. It's all been growing really, really well. In the corner here, we have the big jasmine that I overwintered from last year. There's a small pot of beans that the kids planted. And then on either side are the decorative herb planters that we planted up together about two months back. This one has the lemon geranium on the left and the marigold on the right. The whole bunch of cilantro, I have cut a ton out of here and I just sheared just about the whole thing less than a week ago. So all that is new regrowth. And then we have the garlic chives in the back, which I also cut completely about a week ago. This other one, you can see the parsley has done fantastic. There are chives in the back, another lemon geranium, and the coleus has grown a ton as well. We have a couple of border dahlias in this area as well. There's a nice bright red and yellow one. And this one I love. I think this one's my favorite. And then a lovely little creamy yellow one down there. I have three Space Master cucumbers in this pot right next to a dwarf ranching sunflower, a couple of calendula planted from seed, and a little short little dianthus or a carnation. This pot has trailing Indian mint, a blue colored salvia, which is an annual, and a lily called apricot fudge. I also bought this last year and it did not flower the first year, so no worries. I'm just taking care of the foliage and I'll plant it out in the landscape somewhere later. The one I overwintered from last year flowered beautifully this year. In this corner, I have a rosemary front and center. Beautiful decorative geranium and more of that Indian mint. This one has put on a lot more growth than the other one. I'm loving the look of that. The shape of the foliage and the smell is just gorgeous. This is one of the pots we planted up together. The eucalyptus is not making a great centerpiece at the moment. I wish it were growing a little bit more upright but that's fine. There's lots of beautiful branches on it. And then the little trailing sedum that I overwintered from last year. It's done flowering now and will need to be cut back, but the darker, almost blue green is the new growth. And I am loving the look of that. From the outside of this patio, we had planted raspberries here and a lot of them didn't survive. And instead of replanting, there's a nice big raspberry there, ignore the bucket. I planted a whole bunch of red spike amaranth in between. There's a little bit more over there. Then we had some zinnias. They're starting to bloom. I've actually been cutting quite a few of these. These are the Benares Giant Mix. They go all along. The ones that you can't see are just the ones that I have cut in the last week or so, and then they're starting to branch. And in the front, we have a winged amobium. This is new to me. I've never grown this before, but it's looking like we might see some flowers in a couple weeks. Oh, there's one. Ah, oh, there's a flower spike right there. Beautiful. Apparently a really good one for drying small white clusters of flowers. That's what I remember. The mint bed is still pretty full, but starting to look a bit tired and no wonder. I've been cutting about 50 stems off of this every week, both for bouquets and for selling as uh, cut herbs at the farmer's market. There is an unknown insect has been doing some damage to this. It doesn't even look like it's been eating, but all these brown holes, these little brown circles are kind of everywhere. So I'm not able to use a lot of it at this point. Here is the shade garden. The hostas are flowering. The columbine is just about finished. Here is one last flower right there. And for contrast, here is a seed pod. <laughs> Hi Molly. And it looks like there are a lot of little black seeds in there. Let's see if we can focus in on those. And you know what I'm going to do is just drop those seeds right next to this plant. They may grow, they may not, 
but that's all right. I'm actually growing a lot of double varieties from seed next year. So we have enough of these single ones, which I believe are McCann's Giants. If there is a star of the show at this point, it would be this beautiful airy Verbena bonariensis, which is flowering. And the Astilbes are getting ready to put on a show as well. These two are nice and tall. And there is a shorter, darker pink variety down there. I also want to point out these drumstick primulas. These I grew from seed last year. They were pretty small in the spring. This new growth has been fantastic. I may even have to divide these before fall. And unfortunately, swamping out my curly fries hosta a little bit, so that might have to move. I do have a few pots in this area as well. That one is just a celery. This is white feather hosta. And it does come out white in the spring, but it's a bit darker green now that it's warmer and a bit more, a bit sunnier. You could, here you can see in the background the tail end of the foxgloves. Those have been really nice and I'm looking forward to growing more of those next year. But just in front, the heucheras. Equally beautiful, if not a little more subtle. So for those who are new here, just behind my main garden, is a large wooded area and there are invasive rose bushes there are wild blackberries there are a ton, there's a ton of everything here's where the garden starts and here is the woods so we have a hard time keeping weeds from encroaching onto the garden but there we start to see some color now calendula and poppies self-seeded through the compost and i am very happy with that but I did seed some Swiss chard, beautiful golden yellow stalks, and some spinach back here that we have been harvesting. A little farther up are some carrots. There are some beautiful turnips hiding in here. Oh, I think we're having those for supper tonight. Now in front of the turnips where we have been harvesting and weeding as we go, we have basil. There's some sweet basil, some dark opal basil. Closer up to the front, there is Thai basil, and we also have a few of these sugar baby watermelons. Parsley is looking really well, and most of this gets cut and sold for the farmer's market. And the next few rows are all cut flowers. This is where my stock was planted, and I stuck sunflowers, pro-cut sunflowers, in the middle. Here's actually a stock that I let go because it had a bit of uh, bug damage on it so that is still there but the sunflowers now are they're starting to bud up and they'll be ready for harvest within I would say two weeks. Now I've done the same thing at the back half of this row but in front we have beautiful snapdragons. I wish I could remember the variety. I think they're butterfly of some kind though I am seeing some of these bugs. They're not damaging the flowers. I am picking them off as much as I can but I haven't been able to figure out what these are. If somebody knows what the name of these little beetles are, please let me know. And here we have a few other colors starting to open as well. And here is my other patch of Pro Cut Sunflowers. Pro Cut White Light, I think. Some new things this year are these asters. These are just gorgeous. These ones are too short at the moment. They're only about 12 inches tall, but my daughter is using them for little mini bouquets at the market. Most of them seem to be pink, but I do have one purple one over there. And these are a spider mix chrysanthemum. I've harvested a couple of these already. Oh, here's one that is ready. I'm gonna put my hand over here for size reference. These are a really good size and a really cool texture too. And they seem to hold up really, really well for vase life. We have lots of these dark purple ones. This one looks mostly white, but it does have a hint of lavender on the petals. And then we have a pink as well. Now, because we get some shade in the afternoon from these trees, I tend to plant things like kale and, oh, there's another Swiss chard right there behind the garlic. I tend to plant leafy greens like this at the back of the beds. Another new to me this year is status. I have probably a six foot row of this and I'm just loving it. I'm only starting to be able to harvest it. And then the gomfrena I did grow last year, but not nearly this many. Here I have the QIS carmine 
and I believe the rest of this is QIS formula mix. So there's a couple of different pinks. I'm loving this deep magenta. And the last row over here is garlic, which is just about ready to be harvested. So I'm keeping my eye on that and I already have some more seedlings to plant in its place. This small box here was just a cold frame that the top broke. So we put a few butternut squash in here. And then those three plants on the left are my sweet potato slips. So there is another project update. Yes, they got incredibly pot bound. I even picked off a few little mini sweet potatoes that had started to grow in the pots. But you can see by those new branches that it is really starting to take off. Back down in the not so pretty area where we did our container planting, the tomatoes are a big success. There's our five cherry tomatoes, which are now standing about five feet high, but that includes the pots. You can almost tell which varieties are which, especially these indigo cherry drops. There's another one. We'll be harvesting tomatoes before we know it. Just to add to the tropical feel, I put my Musa Basu banana right here next to the pool. And I have read that bananas are the world's largest herbaceous perennial. Now that term just means that they die back down to the winter and come back in the spring. You don't think about bananas as being able to survive the winter, but all of these little babies have come up just this year. So I think I'm going to take this out of the pot and see if we can split it up. There are those two good sized plants and then there are five of those little babies that I can separate and repot. Continuing our pot project update, here's the salvia and the variegated ivy and there is a eucalyptus back there. And same thing with the eucalyptus. I wish it would be a little taller rather than wide, but that's all right, I'll be using it nonetheless. Our two blueberries are having a great year. This plant struggled for quite a while, but its berries are bigger than the other one and it's put on a lot of new growth. This one, smaller berries, but it is just loaded. Also happy to report that the grapes came through the winter in these pots. They will need repotting, but I still try to decide where those are going to go. And here's the other pot that looked quite sad when I potted it up, but look at that beautiful rosemary now. It's recovered really nicely. The thyme has just finished flowering and I've been cutting off of this as well. And here is that trailing, I thought it was Indian mint. It's not, I forget what it is. It would be something I bought last year and thought was an annual, but it survived. So that's a bonus plant right there. And I'm afraid the rose is not at its best, but I need to cut this and see if we can get a little more flowers. Let's see if I can find a nice one. Oh, there, there's a nice one. Small, small roses, but in clusters. And this is a climber. It's just still a fairly young plant that I took as a cutting from someone else. The strawberry row, which desperately needs weeding, but that was very productive. Here we have a row of ornamental grasses and I have forgotten which one this is. I'm growing bunny tails and green drops. I think this might be the green drops. No seed heads or anything off of this one yet, but the frosted explosion grass is at its peak. And I've cut off this quite a bit already over the last week or so. Same with the yarrow, if you can see it through all this dill. I've cut so much of this yarrow. The first flush is just coming to an end, but I'm sure I'll get more. Then we have Bupleurum, which has grown really well, but I confess I'm not super impressed using it in bouquets, so I'm not sure I'm gonna grow that again next year. Really cool looking in the garden though, maybe just as an ornamental. This was another row of stock, but this time I interplanted it with Rubeckia, Cherokee Sunset, I believe. And there are some flower spikes starting to grow on these. And then the next row we have Indian Summer. Behind the first row, there are the Lysianthus, looking healthy and strong. No flower buds on them yet, but it's still pretty early. There's a small stand of ornamental grass and then all the direct seeded Larkspur. I'm happy to see a pink one come up because so far I've only had this gorgeous electric blue and then this purple. Now the next row was mostly the giant imperial white, so I have lots of that as well. And that is the in-ground portion of the garden, which brings us to the raised beds. 
The thyme is looking pretty tired because it's finally done flowering, which means I can cut it back this week, and I'm gonna cut it back very, very heavily. There's a little space at the end of this bed for some rosemary. So I've been cutting that quite a bit as well. The next bed over looks like a big mess because this is where my elephant garlic was and I didn't weed it too much because I had a lot of nigella planted in here which is now flowering luckily. There are some gorgeous colors from pink to almost purple blue and light blue and even white so I'm cutting off of these quite a bit. But the garlic is going to have to come out this week I think. So I might have to sacrifice these, but I do have some growing in other areas of the garden. I also want to show you a couple of bulb crates. These are some lilies and unfortunately the slugs got at a couple of them. I know it's slugs because I caught them in the act and I haven't really seen much in the way of lily beetles this year. But these lilies are planted in a crate mostly because I didn't have a lot of space where I knew I could keep an eye on them in the garden and also because I planted them up really late. So I'm not expecting much out of them this year, but there's a good rich soil here that they're planted in and I'll be moving them out to a better location at the end of this year. I got them on clearance at the end of the season, so I don't really mind if I don't get a ton of flowers off of them this year or what's looking to be super short flowers. In fact, I might even clip them off. A more successful bulb crate experiment though are my calla lilies and these have been growing pretty quick. They will get watered today for sure. It's been really hot, but I have my first flower really short at the moment, but I'm sure they're going to get taller. The perennial herbs have not been disappointing at all. The tarragon I've been cutting really heavily. Same with the sage which is going to get a bit of a heavier cut since it's done flowering now. The oregano is flowering, so it is providing both herbs as well as bouquet fillers. I love using these little, these little flower heads as bouquet fillers. The saffron crocus bed, which is bursting with dill, same as everywhere else. I also have some scabiosa, and this is a new variety to me this year, so I don't know if this it's going to do anything else other than that. I kind of thought that they were actually flowers. I don't know. We'll see. This is kind of cool. If this is all it does, I'll use those no problem or maybe dry them instead. Now the chives should have been cut back weeks ago. I just never got to it. And the fever few, there is the overwintered stuff is all gone and cut back. But the spring planted, which is, I think, magic lime green. I think I like this one even better than the tetra white. But now that the tetra white's been gone for two weeks, I can show you all the new growth that is coming. So I might cut, I might actually move some of these into a perennial bed to see if they come back for another year. We'll see. I'm just happy to see some new growth in there for sure. And here, oh boy, is a poor pot that needs some water. All we have in here is two marigolds and a lemon geranium. There's a ton of this verbena bonariensis that self-seeded from last year and I love it. I've been trialing it out for vase life to see if I can use it as filler in bouquets. Same as the calendula, that all self-seeded. What I have planted here though are some perennial herbs and some of the more decorative varieties as well. This is a chocolate mint which is being afflicted by that same whatever the heck insect is making all of those tiny spots. So it might get cut back. I have a winter savory that I cut quite a bit off of. A few different varieties of sage. I love having these decorative varieties nice next to the greenhouse. Then we have a variegated thyme, a lemon thyme, a silver edged thyme, and we have a few different oreganos over there. So well, this one is a variegated, and then we have a golden oregano, and then this one is a spicy oregano. This one is just starting to flower, so I'm going to try that one out as bouquet fillers as well. In contrast to the other one, this one has white flowers. I want to show you these pots too, because these are my cannas that I overwintered, and I'll admit, completely forgot to take them out of storage and didn't plant them up until early July. Yeah. 
So luckily three of them survived and they're all different. And I think that's great because I think I only had three varieties. So the other ones would have just been multiples. So that's no big loss. This is my bin of stuff that should have been planted a month ago. So that might not even be salvageable. This one, however, is cucumbers. I think needs a bit of water, but otherwise happy. Those poor lemon geraniums, which should also have been planted months ago. A quick peek behind the greenhouse. And inside the greenhouse. So you can see I still have a ton more stuff that needs planting up. There's everything from sunflowers to basil to milkweed. This is my next succession of sunflowers. And six more lavender cuttings that have rooted well. And I'll be planting those out in the next couple of weeks. This greenhouse is mainly for the peppers and tomatoes. And one of those tomatoes has just about reached the six foot mark. Now, one of the most recent videos where I planted these, I might as well give you a quick project update. The ginger is doing great. The tomato, the lemongrass, it looks like the cumin has packed it in. So I'm going to plant something else there. I actually have a few more small pieces of ginger that might go in there. The Vietnamese coriander and the, what is that, pineapple sage, however, are really happy. And then not a whole lot of growth from those two rosemary yet, but it's likely just growing roots. And oh look, we have a pepper. Actually, it looks like we have many peppers. Yay. We do still have a small pile of pots ready to be planted that are sitting out there in front of the greenhouse. But these beds, I'm so happy with. Look at the bells of Ireland. You'll excuse me for being quite proud of this. Most of them are direct sown too. And the seedlings sprouted anywhere from within a week to some of them came up only, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. And the other surprise is the anemones. I expected they would die off when the ranunculus did, but they are still going. Now, some of these flowers are being covered in aphids. I've noticed that over the last few weeks, so I've stopped using most of them in bouquets. This was planted fairly recently, but I'm starting to see some growth on the tomatoes in the back and especially the squash. Bed number three, where the tulips were, we have flamingo feather celosia in front and zinnias in the back. And this, I think, is split between Benary Giant Hot Pink and Benary Giant Lilac, which I think might be these ones here. That one is most definitely bright pink. The fourth bed was a bit of a question mark. What we have here is a lot of daffodil foliage still dying back and I decided not to move the daffodils this year. I had direct sown a whole bunch of things which I did use. Um, I ripped most of it out. I just left some bachelor's buttons. There's some nigella and one really gorgeous California poppy, which I'm not cutting. I'm just enjoying that. And these large tomato cages are there to support cucumbers and small decorative squash, which I'm going to grow vertically. So some of them will climb up. Some of them will sprawl across the bed, but the daffodil foliage is just about died down. So that should not be a problem. And it has been, I think, only five days since I planted all the dahlias. Some of them are still looking pretty sad but I'm seeing a lot of healthy green shoots. Oh look, even some flower buds. We are now at the front of the house and these beds are in pretty good shape, but I still consider these basically holding beds for everything that I have not found a permanent place for yet. There is a little bit of design to it. You can see a bunch of different dianthus here at the front. There is a lot of lavender, which is really happy. It's been blooming for about two weeks, just finishing up the creeping thyme, which has spread so much that I need to find a better home for it. I think it shouldn't be this close to the lavender. A lot of things that I love about this bed though, the Asiatic lilies, the day lilies, there's a beautiful perennial phlox, it's light pink with a dark, dark center, which I just love. Um, a red bee balm. The daisies, unfortunately, tend to get flattened by wind and rain when they start to bloom every year. The oriental hybrid lilies are coming and I am so excited. These ones here, I'm pretty sure are Casablanca and I have a, um, a stargazer and some rose lilies as well. 
the Crocosmia, I am so excited to see. I put those in last year. There should be three varieties. I'm still waiting for the other two to show up. On the other side, amongst all the weeds, we have a big, beautiful lemon balm. Not a ton of color right now where the foxgloves have finished. The Asiatic lilies are just finishing. There's still some buds waiting to open. A nice big stand of Oriental hybrids over here as well. And a little lime hydrangea getting ready to flower. This is a smaller kidney shaped garden that's right down at the corner of our property near the road. And it's definitely a dry garden. I hardly ever water this. We have a big, tall Carl Forster reed grass, which is one of my favorites. I have a typical echinacea, just the purple cone flower that I grew from seed. And I have a few other nursery bought varieties as well that are a bit more decorative. We have milkweed that I grew from seed. Two varieties, one which is much more mature and the other one which is still quite small that um, was only grown from seed last year. There's some more phlox, a lot of black-eyed Susans, and daylilies, lilies, a few other random things. There were some really nice um, irises that were blooming here in the spring. And it's also in the process of being fairly thoroughly weeded again. Now this spot here is what I really want to show. And this is our big work in progress of getting rid of as much of this grass as, po as possible. Hi, Molly. This is a work in progress, but we've been at it for a couple of weeks now in between working on other projects. We're definitely taking a no dig approach to this because it is just, there's just too many weeds, really relentless ones that spread and the soil underneath isn't all that great. So we are going to build it up quite a bit over the next couple of years. Our front yard has quite a slope to it and at the bottom it's actually below the level of the road. So we can build it up a little bit to the point where there is lots of good soil. So the space that we have now is probably about 10 by 25 feet for now and I'm building it on little by little which is why the cardboard is still sticking out of the side. This is not straight compost, this is a good garden soil with some compost, some manure and other amendments mixed in. So there are mostly annuals in here at the moment. They're not they're growing, but they're not growing quite as fast as I like. I've thrown some extra sunflowers, a lot of cosmos, because I know they do well in poor soil. Here at the front, there are celosias and amaranth, and I'm definitely not happy with the growth, but I was sort of prepared for that to be the case, which is why I stuck mostly just my leftovers in this area. I do have a long-term plan for this, and I'll be sharing that in a future video. The only other thing to note in the front yard is this old fire pit full of spearmint, which is just starting to flower. And I'm happy about that because I love the spearmint flowers to use in bouquets. Flowering spikes are really nice and I prefer them to the peppermint ones. The kid's garden sure has grown. So that is all for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Next time I will be doing some maintenance in the perennial herb beds and I'll be making some changes in there as well. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.